Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be going over Alchemy Esper Oracle. This is a classic Esper control deck with Wrath's removal and a very powerful finish involving the Power 9. Now before we get into the deck tech, I just want to say, if you're also looking to play in the Alchemy Qualifier and you want to play this deck, you want to learn it, uh, get used to the ins and outs and the intricacies, or maybe you just like Alchemy and you want to play this deck to uh, your best ability, then I recommend checking out my Patreon. Uh, it's linked in the description and right now you can find a deep dive on this deck on there. It's uh, got everything you need to know on how to play the deck, including a breakdown of just the list and my philosophy for how I built the deck, as well as tips and tricks and a sideboard guide and explanation of how all the most popular matchups play out. So I highly recommend checking it out if uh, you want to take your play with this deck to the next level. And also, patrons get some extra perks on my Discord, also linked in the description. Uh, even if you're not subscribed, then I highly recommend checking it out. It's the best place to ask me questions. And patrons get some extra perks like early access to deck lists that aren't open to the public yet and you no know, arena code giveaways and you just get more of my attention and more in-depth responses as a thank you for being a subscriber so yeah definitely uh, go ahead and check that out if you're interested anyway let's get into the deck tech first and foremost this deck is a control deck it's got some of the most powerful spells in the format as its interaction spells poor sun important is kind of a head ladder removal spell so anyone got the full four of and it's really strong because not only do you get an exile creature for three mana, which is already pretty solid, and sometimes you get a life or two if you already cast a portent, but also you get uh, the enchantment side. Obviously not a great rate. You could pay four mana for a 3-3 three, three or a 3-4 or whatever, but first little pig exiling artifacts and enchantments is really, really relevant. It actually come up so much because there's so many relevant artifacts and enchantments like One Ring and Case of the Lost Witness and Insidious Roots and Palantir and whatnot. So first little pig just does a ton of work and it's so nice to have that option. And of course, important already staples that to a very solid removal spell in Lend a Ham. I've also got uh, a Wrath, which is Sunfall. Uh, this is also a really strong card. Exiling our creatures is relevant against a lot of decks over destroy since you got random indestructible cards and stuff like that. And uh, the incubate X is pretty strong. Sometimes you end up with like a 4 4 or 5 5 or something um, just because you exile a bunch of creatures and that helps you rebuild if you're behind after wrathing. Yeah, this card's really strong. And sometimes you just sunfall two creatures on either side of the board and still just don't feel bad because you get this 4 4. And sunfall is just really important against aggressive decks and a lot of creature decks, which there are a number of. So despite it being a little bit clunky as a 5 mana wrath, having the full four of it, it's still just so important in so many matchups. Additionally, we've got some uh, removal on the low end. We've got counter spells like Stern Scolding and Normalize. Stern Scolding is good at dealing with creatures like uh, Juggernaut Peddler and Bat and Oracle of the Alpha, stuff with ETBs that you like to avoid. And um, Normalize is uh, just a great card. Mana Leak is insane, and this card already um, comes with some upside because it exiles, which sometimes comes up. Uh, and then we've also got some two-minute removal spells in Go for the Throat and Get Lost. Uh, it's definitely reasonable to run the full three get lost over go for the throat uh, because there are a lot of artifact or uh, enchantments and planeswalkers that are relevant. Uh, as I just mentioned, you've got Insidious Roots and uh, Three Blind Mice and Case of the Lost Witness and whatnot. Uh, but uh, the map tokens from get lost can be a little awkward sometimes, which is why I've got the one go for the throat, uh, kind of running that split. And then we've got a place at a reprieve. This card's also really strong. Uh, it's a it, basically a remand. Uh, counters a spell but returns it to their hand and you draw a card and this card is just so nuts because it gives you um just gives you a, a tempo advantage in the early game you can kind of keep your opponent off foot with uh, reprieve and it also cycles so for example you you reprieve a two drop on turn two you get your card back and they get their two drop back but you know now that it's a little bit later in the game the two drop is worse and then sometimes you just reprieve like a six drop and the game just ends because of this insurmountable tempo advantage you gain from it so Reprieve is really just a nuts card, and it's also really good because this deck, uh, as I'll get into in a second, plays a little bit more like a combo deck than a control deck in some situations, and then you care less about what your opponent doing, and more about getting your cards back, and Reprieve is just better than a counter spell at that point. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's the interaction. Now we got to get into the threats. Uh, so first off, we got Rusko. This card is probably one of the best cards in the alchemy format. It's just absurd. This card comes with a Midnight Clock, which doesn't seem too threatening until you realize that whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you put a Clock Counter. And so going, it goes from like six turns to pop to maybe two or three. And once Clock pops, if you've got a Rusko in play, you're going to be casting a bunch of spells, draining your opponent out, controlling the game. That's going to be really hard to come back from for your opponent. And even if your opponent kills Rusko, they still got to deal with this Midnight Clock, which is just going to refuel you later in the game. So they can't let the game go long. And if you're kind of low on action, you can sink some mana into it. 
and it ramps you, and dealing with Puck is pretty difficult because it's an artifact. Obviously, we've got stuff like Force and Fortin, which can, uh, but Rusko is just a really messed up card. Even without any additional synergy, though this deck has a lot of additional synergy with Rusko. Um, and we've also got uh, Oracle of the Alpha, which is kind of a threat, but it's more of a payoff. It shuffles a power 9, and the reason this card is so strong in this deck in particular is because we've got card draw like Soren's Ransom, which is kind of like a factor fiction, uh, but can create some really awkward spots for your opponent when you hit like a time walk off it or something, because then they have to put the time walk face down against three cards, but then you know that you've already cast an Oracle Alpha. You can kind of guess that that card's really good and go for it. I haven't gotten next leveled by someone uh, putting just a land face down and three cards face up, but you know, when it happens, all power to them. And the real reason why Oracle the Alpha is so nuts is that you've got Case of Lost Witness when combined with Rusko. So Case of Lost Witness, what it does is it shuffles a playset of Fibblethips into your deck. And Fibblethip, you know, a bit of a dorky guy, but once you find one and hold on to him until your end step, then you get a future site from Case of Lost Witness. Basically, you get to play lands and cast spells off the top of your deck, which is nuts on its own, right? It's just so many, you're basically just drawing a couple extra cards a turn because you get to play land off the top and you know, play your removal spells and counter spells and whatnot. A little bit worse in a reactive deck because you get like a counter spell stuck on top, then you kind of gotta wait for your opponent to cast something to get it off the top. But still a very strong card. Um, but the thing is, Oracle of the Alpha shuffling the power nine means that all of a sudden you've got like mocks in and time walks and time twisters to hit off the top. And once you're hitting mocks in off of case lost witness and just playing these zero mana rocks off for free and generating more mana to cast more spells off the top, that's really, really strong. And you know what's also really, really strong with casting a bunch of spells? Rusko. Because Rusko, not only does it put counters on Midnight Clock and drain your opponent, once Midnight Clock pops, you get to wheel, which is a lot stronger when you've got pieces of power in your deck, because if you ever find Time Twister, or uh, sorry, Time Walk while you're doing this, you pretty much just win on the spot. But also, Moxon and Lotus give you more mana to spend your, spend on your cards you wield into, uh, which lets you find more Ruskos and more Clocks, and... You know, if you're going off the case of Lost Witness at the same time, you're also just drawing a ton more cards and all this free mana. It just kind of snowballs really, really hard. And this gives you basically an unbeatable end game of just recycling time walk over and over again with your time twisters and clocks after you get like an Oracle of the Alpha or two going and you've got a bunch of power in your deck and you're casting everything off the top. And later in the game, time walk is going to be effectively a ritual that gives like plus 10 mana because you have to effectively untap all your lands and box in because you get to reuse them in the next turn. And so you can use that mana to find another time walk and another time walk and another time walk. And so no deck can actually beat that. Not even like an attracts or whatever is going to go over the top of you, which is why this deck has such a strong late game, despite being lower to the ground and having a better aggro matchup than a lot of ramp decks in the format. So that part is basically the main strength of this deck, I feel, um, and the main strength of the Oracle package, which a lot of decks have been adopting just to even be able to compete with this. Uh, now onto the sideboard. Uh, so these top cards are generally what we bring in in the control matchups. Three to rest and two negate kind of speak for themselves. One mana disruption is really strong in this matchup uh, in, the, in the mirror particularly because you can duress to clear the way for your threats and you know grab a counterspell or uh, whatever. But also because knowing your opponent's hand is actually really huge in the mirror because it's often like a dance around who can resolve their rust go first or who can kind of gain more tempo by playing around counterspells and knowing what they've got what they're working with can help you really dominate the early game, especially if they've got a hand that's more exploitable and maybe they're like buffling counter spells and now you know that they don't have any. The gate's also pretty strong because it just helps you in the counter battles and it's just more disruption, better than disdainful stroke because uh, in the mirror you don't really have many expensive spells that actually need countering. Uh, Phantasm Extraction is a bit of a weird card. You generally want it on the draw in most matchups, but then sometimes I keep in one or two on the play in the mirror as well. Uh, just a very solid card. Thought Seize is good. Thought Seize when you don't lose life is good. Yeah, it kind of speaks for itself. Uh, over here, we've got uh, a single cut down. Just some more one-man interaction. I found that against aggro, one of the deck's biggest weaknesses is that it doesn't have too much one-man interaction, so you can fall behind if you're on the draw. But with Stern Scolding and Cut Down, that's mitigated a bit. Two Soul Guide Lantern help against uh, Reanimator and Roots and all these graveyard decks. Uh, just a nice little card and Cycle's worst case. Temporary Lockdown is this X Wraths 5 through 7. And it is so strong against a lot of decks like Convoke and Roots and Ar Artifact Aggro. It's your most important card in these matchups. Now, the reason I don't have any in the main deck, uh, though I definitely uh, see some lists with it, which is totally fine, 
Uh, but it's a little bit awkward with case loss witness and also with mocks and with Oracle Alpha. But particularly with case, you kind of you want to get down case early and start looking for fill tip. But then if you exit out with temporary lockdown, that kind of undoes your hard work. So those aren't too great. Generally, when I board in lockdown, I board out some number of case loss witnesses, both because the match if you want temporary lockdown, the card advantage from case is less important, and also because temporary lockdown and case kind of clash. Now, last but not least, we've got uh, a pair of Legion to Ashes. This card, just a catch-all answer to a bunch of stuff. Mostly, it's in there for Roots and 3-Bind Mice decks because it cleans up the 3-Bind Mice. It cleans up the Roots or the tokens from Roots. Uh, but also, you know, sometimes you just got to board in against someone with a bunch of One Rings or whatnot, and it's just a totally fine kind of flexible sideboard card. All right, that's going to be the deck tech. Let's get straight into the games. Welcome to match number one. We're going to go ahead and keep this... It's a little sketchy because I've got two tap lands, but hopefully if we don't find a third, we can just jam case. And if we do, then we can hold up reprieve. And that's actually just the perfect draw. I kind of want to just go case on two since I'd rather hold up reprieve on turn three. And there's nothing too threatening that my opponent can hold up on turn two, probably. Or get down. Uh, and generally, more aggressive decks don't play Captivating Crossroad. Yeah, Juggernaut Peddler is fine. Our hand right now is pretty redundant. Like, they can take the Reprieve and we're stuck with only Normalize. It's not really something I'm too worried about. Yeah, it goes for the Portent. That makes sense. Uh, another Reprieve. I think I'll just put this in on... I don't want to go... Blue, since we already have double white, and that'll mean that uh, we can normalize without taking damage next turn. We could have also put it on white or black. I think all three are reasonable choices since the first painless black source, but then no more lies still costs life. I would be surprised if they. Okay, so they do go ahead and cast something. It just lets me cycle the reprieve, which doesn't really see why they would do that, but that's fine. Um, missing on a land drop here, but Strange Scolding is a nice one. It deals with the bat permanently. Take our two here, not under too much pressure, so I'm not too worried about the peddler. And yeah, now finally, opponent's passing, not doing anything, but now they're kind of getting punished for it because I get to cast this portent. And I really don't care if this gets reprieved. That's fine. Okay, on a Mirex. I want to main phase something. Hmm. Main phase is important, means it's painless, and dodges reprieve. That seems not great. The issue is that I don't have these up, so I don't have a stern scolding, so if they went for something bigger... I think the 3 life is fine to give up for now. Especially since if they miss their land drop, they have to discard to hand size. And I actually kind of want them to discard to hand size, so I'll go for a reprieve. Nice. Yeah, I think I'll just go to my turn and let them discard. Oh, we hit our land too. That's perfect. At this point, I kind of want to port the Peddler because we are taking some damage from it at this point. And if they have a Reprieve, I'll just normalize it. That'll be fine. I get a little punished if they can go for like a second two drop. To draw their land, but it looks like they don't. And yeah, now now this game is pretty much locked up because now I get to Soren Dreads on and counter their play. And that's gonna put me pretty far ahead. Let's see if I ever find a fibble thip and flip this case, then I'm gonna be doing great. And um I'm pretty far ahead on cards because of it's important on an adventure as well. I think a bunch of damage off uh lands, which isn't great. Uh get lost. Honestly, I don't think I care about that. That's fine. I mean, they avoid discarding to hand size, which is obviously I see why they made the play. 
but I don't think it's worth burning a counter spell on. But she sends the map tokens are actually pretty relevant, and we don't really need to go for the throat, and yeah, Rusko is just gonna lock this up. Alright, clock comes down. Crack a map. Yeah, actually, that's perfect, because we have this to with it now. And I'll just pass the turn. Yeah, I'm not sure how they get out of this now. It starts with, like, a land and two removal spells on Rusko or something, but they're just way too far behind on tempo. And they scoop it up, yep. Uh, unfortunate game for our opponent there. They, uh... I think their sequence could have been a little better there, though. I understand why they tried to jam things into counter spells when they were missing lands. And, uh... They kind of gave us the room to maneuver. Which, uh, is really important in this matchup. So, look like looks like we're just playing against black-white mid-range. How do I sideboard against this? I'm not even sure that I want to change much. Um, I guess I, I definitely want that Phantasm Extraction, but maybe I'll board out... Uh, like, yeah, Lost, since giving them maps doesn't seem great. And an Oracle of the Alpha, since it doesn't seem like we're heading into too grindy of a late game, necessarily, where we need Oracle. But, like, that doesn't seem amazing, because it's not good against Peddler. Uh, lockdown, they don't seem like they have enough creatures for it. The rest also seems sketchy because they have a lot of creatures, it seems. It's possible that they were missing a third color, but I don't see why they're playing Gixus Command in the three color deck. I think we just run it like this and reevaluate potentially. Alright, this hand's pretty good. Uh, we should get to go, go for the throat into perfect three drop into four drop. And I actually just keep case on top. We kind of got everything we need, uh, and the biggest issue here is just a bunch of peddlers running us out of gas. This probably has to take the Rusko. I would be shocked if it didn't. I am shocked. I guess this implies that they have a second one. Uh, otherwise, they would never take the port, because Rusko is just so threatening. So if they have a second one, holding up go for the third isn't great. If they had a bat, then they wouldn't want to let me hold up go for the throat. So I think it's safe to just jam case, and I want to jam case because I want to start digging towards some more action in the face of these peddlers and, you know, Thoughtseize Bug, of course. Yeah, I think they, they must have a second peddler for this to make sense. No? Okay. I guess I should probably stop trying to second guess, uh... Second guess, uh, diamond players. Yeah, didn't go for the Undercity Sewer since Seagull Coast would have been a tap land in the future anyway, and I think the Surveil gets better later in the game. Since I know better what I want, and this lets me hold up Portent. Uh, I'll let this happen. I'm fine with that. And, sure. I uh, had a sneeze for a second. Yeah, uh, I wanted to bid out the reprieve because now we can just jam Rusko. I think that there was a bad reprieve on their part, especially since they knew about the Rusko. And this is kind of why I would have taken the Rusko. It's not like Porton was doing much since exiling the Peddler is not that much of a threat. And now Rusko, the biggest issue with Rusko is that even if they kill the actual creature itself, now they're going to have to spend a poor cent Porton on killing the clock. If they can even get to it in time, they're taking a a turn off to do so as well. So now I could just draw three. Honestly, they're not even putting me under enough pressure for that to be an issue. And to avoid discarding the head size, especially, I'm just going to go Phantasm Extraction. Aha! So this is the Dollmaker deck. Maybe I should have seen that coming because I definitely should have boarded in, uh, boarded differently. What do I want to do about this? This is a pretty threatening hand, obviously. Um, I could take that three blind mice. I think that's probably my best option. Uh, they get to Dawnmaker Jugnaut Peddler, but I'm kind of okay with that. I think three blind mice is the scariest card here because if they get the Dollmaker blind mice thing going, that'll be pretty far behind.
Yeah, hits our fourth lane drop. Uh, but I'm super fine with Radic because I have the Sunfall. And now, given that, I'm actually just going to go ahead and Phantasm Extraction the uh, Talent here. Since now Dollmaker doesn't do too much, and I'm not worried about Reprieve. Alright, I put a scoop set up there. I don't blame them. They were pretty far behind. And we're gonna go ahead and keep this. The sand is pretty good. Got a uh, reprieve on two into any of these three drops on three. Uh, probably gonna be cycling Lorien revealed if I had to guess. Uh, if this turn scolding ended up being good, and this hand's gonna be excellent. Opponents on a mole too, which never hurts. Probably just getting a basic island here since a uh, decent chance we want to cast a three drop on three. And we want to cycle the Lorien revealed now since. Uh, there's definitely a chance that, uh, well, we want to hold Reprieve on turn two, so we can't do it then. We end up using it. And I think I'll just play out the uh, island for now. Since uh, no reason to reveal that we have a third land. And uh, if we draw. Yeah, it's like we can play an next turn for black mana anyway. It's not like we can get punished for it. Okay, so Kellen. I kind of want to cash in my turns going for two reasons. One is that. This lets them go journey on Kellen on turn two, and two, they won't necessarily play a good target for Storm Scolding in the future. So this probably looks like uh, Naya Adventures, if I had to guess. Um, I think I just want to pass the turn. Uh, going for Oracle doesn't seem amazing, because there are some pretty threatening cards that they could play. And I think I'd rather just spend my mana efficiently. Now, here I might is not one of those. I think uh, an additional upside of this play is that if they don't do anything that's threatening, we could just go for Sauron Gentum. Now, they could have Reprieve here, or they could have... If this is Convoke, though I don't see why they'd be playing Count if it's Convoke, but if it's Convoke, then they could have uh, Heroic Reinforcements, or whatever the... Uh... Oh, that's interesting. So I guess this is a Rusko. What else would make sense? But would I rather have a Rusko or two lands in a removal spell? It doesn't seem very smart to take the Rusko. It doesn't seem like it makes a ton of sense. The issue is, okay, here's the thing though. I will go up to eight, seven, eight cards again. Yeah, so I won't even be this here on the hand size. Yeah. Okay, yeah, Rusko. That makes sense. Generally, that's like the one card that they're like unbelievably scared of to that extent. Uh, but just ensuring that we hit our land drops in what seems to be like a slower game versus a Rusko when they actively have Hayor in play. Okay, uh, Inlet Games Recruiter. I don't even feel like reproving that because again, they get to use the adventure. I do. Now, the question is do I want a Storm's Ransom or just Pours Important? I think the answer is important because I already have a bunch of cards in hand and stuff to do, and I can use Storm's Ransom next turn. Uh, and now we just play Mirex, and honestly, I think I will just play this uh, Oracle of the Alpha. Stop the Haywire Might attacks, gets a Scrying, and um, kind of later in the game when we know better what we need, Storm's Ransom gets better. Since like, I don't know, maybe we're meta screwed and we need lands. Maybe we're uh, slid on action and we'll take a, a rusk over three lands. I'm just going to reprieve this. It's a good tempo play. And if it scoops it up, yeah, a bit of an early scoop again, but they, again, were pretty far behind. So I definitely understand it. Obviously, this position probably doesn't feel great for them. So, yes, I guess this is Convoke. I don't see why they're playing Kellen, but whatever. Uh, but this seems like the matchup for temporary lockdown, and I'm going to board in the Phantasmal Extractions and cut down. And we're going to go down. Probably going to go like 2Ks, 2 Oracle. Maybe just all 3Ks, all 3 Oracle. I mean, obviously, both of these get a lot worse with temporary lockdown, and the uh, kind of over the top game plan is less necessary. Leaves us maybe a little bit low on gas, but since I added the fourth Storm's Ransom to the deck, I'm a lot comfortable 
more comfortable sideboarding like this. I think we can just run it like that. Alternatively, you could trim on like Soren's Ransoms and stuff like that. Maybe I get lost and uh, keep like a, maybe like two Fable Tips, one Oracle or something like that, vice versa maybe. Uh, but I like this plan a little more. It depends. If they've got sideboard cards that are like a ton of sideboard cards that are going to help them grind, then that plan gets a little worse. Uh, this seems like a keep. Temporary Lockdown is really insane. Roscoe's nice to have. Yeah, looks like it is. Just Convoke. Uh, I think we're just going to probably Loren Field for a tap Black Source turn two. Uh, it's a nice curve out unless they miss their land drop. Yeah. Less nice of a curve out. Okay, if um they miss their land on this turn, I should I don't want to keep Sword Red on top. It's not like super necessary, but seems nice to have. Alright, and yeah, now we're just gonna go for a temporary lockdown into Rusko, and they're gonna be pretty far behind. And with the Rusko, we're probably gonna cycle a Loren Field to hit land drops, since we already have a second one anyway, if we need to draw three and Storm Giants and all that. And yeah, just get the Storm Giants on because if if they're not gonna be pressuring, then having ransom to ensure we don't uh run out of gas seems great. And opponent scoops it up. Yeah, they were again super dead here. Uh, missing land drops is just really brutal. Alright, match number three, and this... It's kind of sketchy. It's got our colors of mana, but this is going to get painful Sunfall to cast. Though, I'm going to tap Skyland. I'm tempted to keep this. I think I will. Against Agri, we can go 3-4 Sunfall. On the draw, it's going to be a little sketchy. And then against Control, we've got double... Let's go, so it can't go too wrong. And now get lost is a nice draw, though. Is this start? I'm kind of tempted to just get the meticulous archive because surveils us towards land drops. Uh, immediately get punished. Yeah, in this case, I'm just gonna go. I mean, it, it telegraphs the reprieve pretty hard, but I think casting reprieve on three is going to be better than... Okay, that's fine. Uh, I guess this is like Jund. Oh, 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 right. This is a Jarsal deck, that's why. That makes sense. Uh, sure, I'll keep a land on top even if it's a tap land. Missing land does not seem like the the way to go. I'm just gonna reprieve this since I want to jam Rusko next turn anyway, so I might as well spend my mana. And they can't recast it, which is great. And now I would assume that they kill the first Rusko, and then we can play the second Rusko and hold up get lost for whatever threat they have, which I am a big fan of. I'm probably gonna perilous iteration into or sort of Crucius or something like that, so. Not sure, this could be like something like Overcooked, or just could be straight Jund. Maybe not Overcooked, but it, it kind of remains to be seen what else they've got going on, which is kind of the question here. Aside from, you know, cheap interaction, spells for Jarosol, and Crucius. Interesting to see them... Yeah, it seemed like they weren't going to pair with iteration if they analyzed the Pollen first. And there's the Crucius I was talking about. And that's that's fine, because we're just going to get lost it. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put a stop on second main, since um, you want to kill Crucius before it triggers on end step, but I don't see a reason to do it now. It's not like they have counter spells. So, I don't know, maybe we need to normalize something. And also, like, if you... Kill it right away, then they can play a second Crucius. If not, then maybe they like make some of the plays and don't have enough mana to recast Crucius if we stop them from going to end step with their current one. Never mind, it's fine. It's one of the clocks, but I'm really not too worried about that. Uh, and this is this is them just two for running themselves on a Rusko. Uh, okay, that's. I guess I can see why they did that. But they're gonna have to move to second main to get rid of this mana anyway. Um, 
which would make Jarosil worse. I guess I am going to spend it, so now they have the opportunity to play Jarosil, but still. Also, I'm not too worried about Jarosil when they don't have a duress the graveyard and only analyze the pollen. They can exile their whole bin. Sure, yeah, there's the Jarosil. They can exile their whole bin to get a creature, but then I could just get lost plus normalize. Oh, I guess they get Haywire in my back and hit the clock. Yeah, that's annoying. But I can't really let them move to end step Crucius anyway. I think this is fine. Uh, oh, that's a nice draw. Hmm. So now I don't want to play Oracle the Alpha anymore. Yeah, I think I think I'm best off just hitting the Jarsal. Because at this point, pressuring with Rusko is actually pretty relevant. Uh, and then I'm going to let the Peril Consideration resolve and normalize the 3-drop they get. Uh, which is good, because normalize is kind of quickly approaching the realm of not being very good because it actually stopped their first spell. Uh, deep cavern bat. Um. I want to normalize it or get lost. I kind of want to normalize it. Because I'm worried about them just going land Crucius and then I can't normalize it and I'm kind of screwed. It does not seem like an amazing spot to be in. Plus, they would know about the normalize anyway, which makes it a lot worse in this kind of situation. Um, now, I think I'll just go for the Oracle. Obviously a little clunky if I end up casting Sunfall, but I'm most likely just going to get lost immediately whatever 3-drop they play. Uh, and then I can curve into Porcin Porton and actually put like a real amount of pressure on them. Uh, Shieldred. Shieldred is fine. Maybe they use their map token on it? Uh, Crucius. Interesting. Um, what's actually more of a threat? I think letting them have Crucius is fine. I think I just kill the Shieldred, and then I attack for a bunch of damage. Uh, Troll Ambitious? Uh, do they have a one of a tracks? I think that's what makes the most sense. Huh. Traxa. Yeah, in that case, I think I could just don't even get lost to Shieldred. I don't think it actually makes sense to. I'll just sort into the main phase. Because if I hit my land drop and can activate Mirex, that's nice. Yeah, I think this has to be a track, so I'd rather just sunfall everything. And then, ideally, if I have my land drop, I can also hold up Get Lost after that for whatever Jar Soul nonsense. And they're also going to be super disincentivized to give me counter spells here. If I get like land counter spell, then I'll want to have Get Lost to the Shield, but I think that's fine. And I don't think casting Gelos on Shieldred is great, because then I'm forced to Sunfall the Atraxa anyway. Uh, yeah, I'll take these three. Interesting. Okay, so first things first, now with the Ring where I can attack with Rusko, and if they want to trade off with, uh, that's fine. Lucius. This is this is actually kind of interesting. I can play the case. Oh. And then I'll just cast a sword on Ransom. Oh. Yeah, they could actually just die here. Uh what? Um. Huh. I mean, this means these have to be pretty good. But Otis, that's six. I put them to four. Put them to three. And then, okay, hold on. Let me think. Let me think. Right. So Lotus. Lotus Sapphire, put them to 6, attack with Oracle, put them to 4, they cast Atraxa, 
I cast Get Lost, Sunfall, put them to two. No, it doesn't seem amazing. I think I'll just go for this pile. Huh. That... I guess I'm surprised by that. That's fine. I think I'll just switch the ring bearer onto the oracle now. Wow, I, I, I guess I kind of got got. But... Doesn't matter too much, I don't think. Oh, that's a nice one. Sure. So we might take some damage here on the crackback, but I'm not too worried about that. And yeah, shield with life gain uh, is kind of the main reason, because I'd have to get lost right away, and then if I'm stun falling anyway, that's not great. And this is all predicated on the fact that they have an Atraxa here, which if they don't, I'm actually feeling a lot better on, about the spot. But I just don't... The one of Atraxa to cast off Predators makes sense, kinda? Kinda doesn't? I'm not sure. Yeah, man, it was crazy. I, just, I, just, I, I have no clue what this ambitious card they have could be. If it's a, it's gotta be a 7 drop. Maybe it's like a Titan of Industry? Nope, it is an Atraxa. Okay. But they, they tapped out before the Atraxa, which makes no sense. I think that's a terrible play. And they have nerfed Orcish Bowmasters, which is actually a huge issue for this deck because of how much it relies on wheels. What is this deck? Alright. Okay, makes a treasure so they can answer the Oracle. Sure. Which they will now. Sure. Don't love that, but okay. I guess they were... Probably going to be forced to do it anyway pretty soon, so maybe that's fine. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that's very perfect. That is excellent. Now I'm just going to go ahead and fire off the Sun Ball. And then immediately just jam Pimble Hip. That was a great draw. Another Pimble Hip. Not necessary, though. So here, I'm holding up Ripple Spell, and if they don't do anything, then I'm flipping this Incubate and putting them under a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, snapping off Ripple Spell on Jarsil. No thank you, sir. Damn. Super not interested in that. And they can have a second one, because this is not white. Shooter it is fine. Gonna get lost in how. Don't feel like risking it. And I just go ahead and get him for some damage. I gotta hold full control for this. But we'll pivot up and full control is just in case I hit something on top that I can cast. But uh, I don't. And just play land. And there's a Rusko on top. I mean, Rusko's great, so I'll just hold up Porton. Otherwise, I was going for Oracle to shuffle in some more power, but I'll take a Rusko. Rusko just kills someone on the spot. Oh, Kazadon. Yep, that's CG. There's just no way that they have a relevant follow-up. Sure. Shuffle's only my Rusko. That's fine. Like, super not worried about that. Let them discard, I suppose. Damn. It's funny, because this Paralysis Iteration is somewhat likely to get them a land before on the on the lower and higher mode. Uh, Lady Anchorage. There's the Rusko. Oops it up. Okay, so looks like just a pretty classic Jun mid-range deck with a, with a top end of Atraxa, with like Analyze the Pollen, and stuff to get to it. So Stern Scolding doesn't seem great. Neither does Cut Down. And Talon Max Stash is obviously excellent here. I don't want Legion Stashes. I don't think I do. Press, anything like that. Yeah. I think it's fine to just run it like this. I would like more one turn one removal spells. One for one removal is is good in this matchup. But I only have seven total 
Strength Scolding and Cutdown are specifically bad in this matchup. So does Leech of Sashes since all their three drops get value before it comes down. Don't really want Lockdown. But this is fine. I think I like all the cards in my deck in this matchup anyway. Having the Oracle game plan does seem pretty good against them. Not super necessary, but uh, nice to have, especially against Atraxa. Yeah, seems, seems great. I think I'm just going Phantasma Extraction on turn one. Since I can then hold up turn two reprieve. Uh not worried about this. Not worried about this. I guess I'm supposed to take the Bowmasters. Bowmasters is a real issue. I'll give them that. Maybe I should be keeping in scolding for it. Uh top next to bat. Fine. Yeah, actually maybe maybe I will keep in. Either scolding or cut down. I guess I'll be boarding out entire extraction. And then maybe I can board out like a single oracle for the three of those. Because that Bowmasters Crucius is actually a lot of targets. They took the port. That makes sense. Um, since they probably aren't casting anything or pre worthy, I'm just going to jam the case of the Lost Witness. And I get punished really hard for this if they do draw something. But. I think at this point, I'm actually falling behind because I don't actually have a way to answer this bat. And they could just choose not to play into my reprieve. And it looks like we're not getting punished, which is great. Surveil is the way I showed it. I guess they do know about their pre and this makes sense because they're going to analyze the poly. Sure. What are they getting? Probably a three. Oh, Masters. Interesting. Okay, I can see why. I can see why. I'll give them that. Uh. Hmm. I think I just want to. Actually, yeah, I want to play the Dark Six so I can cycle this Lorraine for an island. I think that's optimal. Uh, sure. That I'm a little surprised by. But it's fine. Oh, I guess I don't know about the port. Okay, so that makes sense, yeah. Sure. It's a little awkward. For me, for sure. Uh, Fibble Fib. Fibble Fib is a nice one. I think I'm just going to play this to have painless white mana. You should just, Fibble Fib actually just dies here. I try to go for it. I think I'll just pass. Doesn't go for the Bowmasters. Which makes sense, it's just a 1-1 one, one and now vulnerable to removal. Yeah, despite being actually like okay in this matchup, Bowmaster without the ETB is just so much worse. Are they casting it now? Because I honestly probably will reprieve it if they do. Reprieve is quickly losing its utility and they're nowhere near a track, so. Also, Reprieve is worse than the Bowmaster can play. It's always... I can never tell if Sword and was actually resolved or thinking about it, or if they're thinking about responding to it. But I think it's resolved at this point. We'll see, though. We'll see. Uh, opponent is taking their sweet time. All right. Uh, well, I guess I'll take the get lost in the land. I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth with getting the portent back. These two are probably good, but yeah, Rusko Fibblethip. Fibblethip actually isn't very good, and Rusko is, I mean, good, but 
yeah, I guess I guess slight punish, but I think risking it is not where I want to be in this position. And I think I'll just go for the uh important start getting some pressure going maybe. I'm going for the flag pig. I don't think I have any artifacts and enchantments I'm too worried about. It's probably just eating a go for the throw anyway, it seems. Um, but just the extra pressure seems nice. Being a bit bigger. Why not? Okay, playing this on white, not really indicative of them necessarily having a track, so though, since I think that's a good play, even if they don't, just in case. Um, playing Fable Dip into Bowmasters doesn't seem amazing. So playing Fibble Thip. Oh wait, no, this this works. This works. Yeah, so let's just play Fibble Thip. And this keeps up reprieve for a potential attraction as well. Now they're gonna respond with Bowmasters. And since it doesn't have the ETB, I just kill it. And Fibble Thip is fine. And sure, Fibble Thip needs a removal spell, but this is still a good exchange for me. And this means that they're empty handed with nothing going on. And I have a preview up just in case. So I'm feeling great about my position. Obviously, like, if they just jam a jar, so things get worse. But now I've got removal protection as well. Or a removal spell for protection. Yeah. I think I'll just play the Oracle. Seems better than firing up the Anchorage or playing the Poor Sand Important, especially since I get to Undercity Sewers to look for some, some recalls and time walks. Mox just not what I'm looking for. That's fine. Uh, sure, you know what? I don't want to burn my reprieve because of Atraxa, so I'll just get lost that right away. Smart of them not to use the map, I suppose. Oops it up. Well, yep. Yeah. I guess they, again, were pretty far behind there, but not dead quite yet. I'll take it, though. All right, match number four, and we have paired into a silver player. We'll see if this is competitive. If it's not, I might just cut out of the video. Um, Wow, I don't think I can keep this. Unfortunately, Mirex really being punishing heroes. Uh, it's not going to let us hold up Reprieve, and we got... It's just so risky to keep. Okay, this hand's much better. We need to go case into Oracle against Control Deck, and we've got a Sunfall against Agar. All bottom one of the Sunfalls since they're kind of redundant, and having three lands is nice. Lead on a tap land. Uh, don't think I need Lorien. At this point, I'm kind of not sure if I need lands or spells, and keeping a card that's kind of a not great middle ground doesn't seem great, so I'm actually just happy with both at this point. Um, all right, second Oracle. Looks like the mirror. Okay, this is this is fun. Um. Okay, I could jam Oracle. Uh, that just plays into reprieve, which doesn't seem amazing. Mm. Ooh, they have a mirror X. That's not good. Mirrors doesn't mean I'm going to have to force action here. Since the, the mites do add up. Oh. Oh no. Oh, it is discarding to hand size. Well, now, given that they're discarding to hand size and have a Mirix, I think I never, definitely need to force the issue. So they're going to reprieve, and I'm going to reprieve their reprieve. And if they find a land and cast Rusko, I get wrecked. That is fine. I'll let that happen. I'd be more worried about it if I didn't have a second oracle. Uh, no thank you, sir. I will pass on that. Um, I think I just kind of want to get my own oracle down rather than Storm Jansom. Start getting some pressure going. Start the scrying. Oh, no thank you, sir. Yeah, now... Scoops it up. This is kind of how the mirror goes. Obviously, that's a bit of an oversimplification, but if you get your threats reprieved while I'm 
doing my thing, then you're falling really far behind. And in this case, they were just falling really far behind because I could go Storm Thread some, port the Rusko, and then three little pigs, exile the clock, assuming I hit my land drop. That's a ton of pressure. Also, if I ever find a Fibble Tip, they're just gone. So yeah, I uh, don't blame them for scooping. They were pretty far behind there. Um, and that's that's a good example of, I guess, how not to play the early game, though, of course, they were kind of forced into playing this way because of their mana situation. Alright, on the play, or on the draw, we definitely want a Tasmal, the rest is great, and a gate, and we're going to go down the four Sunfalls, we're going to go down, uh, go for the throat, and we're going to go down, start scolding. Uh, scolding is fine in this matchup, but it's just not good enough to keep it post-board. Hits Fibble Thip and uh, Erd Wizard. But that's just not really enough. Oracle the Alpha. Especially since it's very awkward to hit off the top with uh, Ace of Lost Witness, which is something that actually comes up in this matchup. I reason to open out since of how important Ace is in the matchup. Wow, this hand. Um, so both these cards are great in the matchup. I'm tempted to keep it. I mean, yeah, it's five lands, but... Eh? I mean, hitting land drops is good in this matchup. Burn Thrensome is a strong card. You just gotta not draw more lands. That's, that's not what I want to see. Uh, huh. this is awkward. I think Alantir is the three drop I'm most worried about. I don't think taking one ring makes sense. Since it's honestly about us threatening as Palantir. If Palantir comes down on three. Obviously, it's like weird with the curve, but playing one ring on four isn't even great because then you can't activate it right away. And I think I'm more likely to find like a counter spell for one ring by then. Okay, Rusko is a great find. Uh, yeah. I don't see them main phasing it, to be honest. And I can't, I can't resolve my ransom now with the ransom on the stack. Uh, Ooh. So, yeah. I think I can go like this. Because these are the two most important cards. But uh, Merrick's less so. I don't want to give them three lands. Because they'll take the three lands and they have a one ring. But I don't want them to have. And if they have to gate, they'll probably just fire it off on ransom. Gate isn't too much of an issue here, so I think I just go like this. I'd rather them take the lands, but I don't want to give them three lands. Because they could just be stuck on lands. And, yep, they take those two. That's, that's, I like that. If I'd given them the Mirix with the gate, I think they would have taken it for sure. That doesn't seem great. And yeah, they're too scared to go for the one ring because of counter spells. And also because it's just not great on turn four, since it's a lot better when you get to activate it immediately. Uh, well, I, I am not taking these three, I'm afraid. Wow, okay. I mean, yeah, sometimes that's just how it goes. The gate is a great find, though, since I'm just going to hold that up for the one ring. Uh, can't keep Oracle the Alpha on top, I'm afraid. Yeah, drew, drew too many lands for this to go great for us. Um... Okay, so these... These two are the most important. I don't want to go like this. Because Mirix isn't. Mirix is basically a blank. But before it's important, it's good. No more lies I can play around. Get lost is okay. I think this is fine. I don't know. Swords and Insult Powers are really difficult because it's just. There's no right answer, it feels like. But I, I think just giving them a port and a second Mirix, which they're probably not going to be able to utilize very well, is, is fine. 
And with them being on normal last, which is kind of what I wanted, it means that I can go Rusko plus hold up the eight. Though that's very risky. And they're gonna port into it, which doesn't seem amazing to let them use our mana. Uh and I drew this case, which is actually really important, because I could just go case, hold up the gate, and so I'm still doing something with my mana, which is nice. Oh, that's a that's a great hit. I actually really like that. Cycling Lauren revealed. Uh that I am a little worried about because it means I have gas, but on the other hand, it's like basically impossible to resolve it at this point. So that's fine. Uh, are they going for the one ring? I'm kind of curious. It's on the gate. If they counter back, then they don't get to activate the one ring, and then I get to go Rusko hold up Sarn's Ransom. So it's not even that good. Yeah, very, very suspicious tapping from them there, but that's fine. I just spend on the gate. They have a reprieve, probably. Or normalize. Reprieve. Sure. I don't think waiting on the case makes sense, though. Uh, Yeah. I'll just play Rusko. And hold up the gate and ransom. This isn't great. One ring is, one ring is very strong in this matchup, though. It's kind of difficult to get going, which is why I don't have it in my sideboard. Um, I, mean, I think my opponent's just not on um, the power 9 thing. They're on the uh, artifacts that generate value over time thing. Uh, where's some pro on Let's go. I don't want to just negate that, to be honest. Because, okay, here's the thing. Rusko is a kind of big threat with a 1 ring in play because it pressures and 1 ring doesn't want you getting pressured. And important is an issue because then the pig exiles the clock. They have more reprieves, which is whatever. I kind of assume that would be the case, otherwise they would have gone for it because they knew about the negate. But um it is what it is, I suppose. Well we'll go for a second case here, really, really hoping for a fibble thip. Uh though as point at this point if we find a fibble thip, then we're good to go and then it should be pretty hard for our opponent. Even with one ring card advantage, case case just rivals it pretty well. Um, not of course find any fibble tip quite yet though, which is fine. We do have a number of counter spells, so we can hold this one ring at bay for now. But we need we need a a fibble tip or a second rusco or something now. And generally, killing them with one ring damage is not super realistic unless you've got a significant amount of pressure to back it up. Uh, this is good for me, I think, because they're going to go, they're going to counter back. And if they don't have a third counter spell, then they're kind of in trouble. Oh, no, they just let me have a huge tempo swing. Okay. Uh, sure. That's kind of surprising to me. But fine. Uh, they just kind of lose the game if I have a second RP, but whatever. Or a no more lies. Yeah, let's, I, don't, I don't like that play. Obviously, it worked, but I, I just don't like it. And this, I'm still just going to... Okay, I'm not going for a reprieve. I, I need a removal for this, this lad. And we got there on the removal for this lad. Nice. Uh, now, I, I, I think that Fibblethip... Case of Lost, Lost, Lost Witness is probably just going to be better than One Ring. Uh, would have been pretty bad if they were Stern Scolding there, but I, I don't. People don't tend to keep it in the mirror. It's just not actually that good. Okay, Normalize is a nice one. And now we're just going to move to end step. I'm going to pour some important on my turn, but in case there's a removal spell on top, I want to first see the top of my deck. And activate One Ring. Yep. Let's see. Nope, oh, just a land. Well, uh, I'll pass on that. And now we've got two counter spells up, which is great. Because at this point, um, their chokehold more so than mine is mana, because they've got to spend mana activating one ring, and they have a limited amount of time until they actually just die to it. Meanwhile, I've got a steady stream of cards forever. And as soon as I shuffle power to my deck, I'm going to be really far ahead. 
Having double case is super strong. Um, no. So they didn't leave up white mana, but they probably have a white land. Uh, and I'm just going to normalize the negate. Actually, I'm going to normalize the important. Am I? No, I'll normalize the negate. I'd rather them not have a negate in my deck in case I time twister. Important. Uh, oh, shoot, they can pay for that. Oh, wait, that's... Yeah, that's actually not... Okay, they can pay for that, but they don't get to activate one ring unless they have... They have a land drop. They have a land drop, but uh, I, can, I can kill the first pig. So that's fine. And genuinely, normalized just being two mana, burn three mana is honestly good, because cards are kind of immaterial for both sides at this point, and uh, mana is very much not immaterial. Um... No, land on top is not what I want to see, but I'm just going to get a pig down. My own pig down. And I'm going to kill their pig. And now I'm going to respond to the one ring activation with the first little pig to exile it so they draw one less card. Pretty sure that's how that works. Uh, though I had a judge tell me otherwise at F and M, so we'll, we'll see. Ah, Vindication. Okay. Didn't end up mattering, but it's nice to know that I was right. And yeah, now with Runnering on, I feel even better. Sure, they go for a Clockmaker, but they're just gonna... I mean, even with Midnight Clock, like, I, I can play this Porton if they reprieve it, then I can exile the Rusko. I, I still think hitting one ring is good here. Because one ring gives them a truly absurd amount of cards. Midnight clocks they kind of have to fight for. Getting lands off these cases is great. If they had a double removal spell for both cases, then fair enough. That'll probably let me sneak through this portent. Yeah, this is going to get pretty, pretty horrific here. Okay, negate on top. Negate on top is nice. Because now I could just spend it on whatever they have here. Nope, nothing. That's fine too. I, I, I'm pretty happy having a negate on top, to be honest. I think I'll just go to combat and attack with the first little pig. Four damage is very much so non trivial here. Go for the throat. Uh, you know what? I think I don't negate it. Oh, get lost is nice. Killing the Rusko is. I'm a big fan of that. Actually, I think I'm probably. No, because I don't want to play into normalize anyway. And I want to activate this first pick to kill the clock, probably. So I'm fine just waiting on this. I gotta set an upkeep stop in case I have a lot of spells in my upkeep. Just nice that these, these stops in advance so I don't forget. Uh, okay. I guess I can only cast. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, shoot. Okay, that's very bad. I was too busy fiddling with my stop, actually. Uh, I don't love that. Okay, that works, though. Honestly, since I had a get-loss on top, I think I'll... I don't want to let them have an extra mana. Sure. I think I'll let them have that clock for now. Oracle. Yep. Now, if they go for a map, I think I let that happen. Uh, Lorian Revealed. That's totally fine. Unless I had a time blocking, in which case, that's super not fine. 
So they are on Oracle. I guess they're just really, really teched for the mirror, but I just don't think that... I mean, Palantir is good, but I don't think that one ring is the way to go. It's just too too slow. And at this point, they're they're just under a, a massive amount of pressure. Uh, I think I just gotta go for it. No more layers, I guess, is non-zero on top. Uh, but then now they have to, like, sure, reprieve this. That's not even a good play. Hmm. I'll just draw the normalize, I think. Okay, and clock is about to pop here for me, which is also good. Uh, Rusko, they're just dead to Rusko. They're dead to Porcine. Yeah, they're dead to Porcine because I could just... And they scoop it up. Okay, yeah, and that was just lethal. Nice. Alright, we take down the mirror. Alright, that's gonna do it for the games. I think this deck's really strong and really well positioned in the current Alchemy metagame. And if you're looking to pick up the deck yourself, and play it maybe on a qualifier or just on ladder, then I recommend checking my Patreon if you're just looking for some extra tips and tricks and a matchup guide, just some help learning it and playing it to the best of your ability. I've got a deep dive in the deck on there, and uh, you also get some extra perks from my Discord, uh, which you should definitely join Eevee if you're not a member of my Patreon. You get to hang out with my community, ask me questions, get sneak peeks from coming stuff, highly recommend it. Uh, and yeah, if you're a patron, you get some extra perks on there as well, which is great, as I mentioned in the description. Uh, and also, you should uh, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment if you enjoyed it. Uh, you know, the, the more people that uh, watch and give me interaction, the more likely I am to make more videos. And the support recently has been great. And I'm going to try to mm, have a little bit more of a consistent upload schedule. Uh, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.